Hello and welcome to another exclusive review with me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had over 12 million minutes viewed on YouTube. This week we're on board the Cunard, Queen Victoria. Despite being a state-of-the-art cruise liner, the Queen Victoria by Cunard is designed to have a luxury vintage feel clearly aimed at vintage passengers. Having been in service for just over 10 years, this ship has a grace and class that is rare on the seas in 2018. The ship is beautiful, the service is extraordinary, and the destinations you will visit will provide memories for a lifetime. You cannot fail to be impressed by the grandeur and beauty of the ship, both externally and within the main public areas. It's quite incredible. You are made to feel as important as the world-renowned vessel itself. I have to admit, though, at times it does feel like a six-star floating care home as you wander past the ballroom dancing, walking sticks and sit through cheesy nightly entertainment. In reality, due to its price and entertainment diary, the only people who have the time, inclination and can afford to travel Cunard are mostly 60 plus. OK, 70 plus. Along with the old school atmosphere, there's outdated rules too. Dinner is either at 6 o'clock or 8.30 and men must wear a jacket, yet women do not have to. If you don't like regiment and rules, this is not the cruise for you. By the end of the week, I realised that most of the rules are mostly overlooked as long as you are respectful and do not offend the other passengers. During your entire stay, you'll feel like royalty. The service is phenomenal. I wanted to sample two weeks on Cunard for one reason only, that is to travel to as many top European destinations as possible on the most beautiful ship available. Bingo! The Queen Victoria by Cunard. Costing just over 270 million, it's not surprising that this is one of the most beautiful ships on Earth. Your average two-week cruise on board QV is between four and seven thousand pounds. It ain't cheap. Everything is state of the art, and the engines are almost inaudible. The aircon is the only minor distraction. The rooms are presumably deliberately vintage and feel very 70s. These do not match the luxury feel of the public areas. So who is Cunard aimed at? Well, they'd say everyone, of course. There are some under 50s on board, but they are rare. Honestly, the entertainment atmosphere and overall onboard feel is not looking for millennial approval. As you walk through the lobby, you get classical 1920s to 40s music or jazz. This is perfect for their clientele at core. No doubt in the next 20 years, Cunard will have to change radically to survive or be sold abroad. With only 2,000 passengers on board, unlike most that are now 4,000 plus, you'll get a luxury feel holiday akin to floating on a five-star old-school luxury hotel. This is my first time on a luxury liner, and it is impressive. Considering the difficulties of achieving faultless service on water, Cunard do a magnificent job. It really is tremendous. Boarding can take a while, and it's the most stressful part of the trip. Once you reach the ship's doors, you'll be blown away by the classic opulence. The public areas of the ship are faultless, impeccably clean and offer infinite old school class and luxury. Your bags will be taken off you at the terminal and they'll be taken to your room. You won't have to carry them through the terminal. What did surprise me at first was the fact that there's a lot of presumed knowledge. We really weren't told anything and this can be somewhat overwhelming. There's tons of information in the room, of course, but this doesn't help with the specifics. Despite being one of the smaller ships, it's still enormous with over 1,000 rooms, a huge theatre, several restaurants, gym, three pools and 12 decks. Your voyage begins with the mandatory emergency demo from the crew. Although it feels somewhat pointless, it's non-negotiable. Attend and get your life jacket on or they will literally come and find you. So, to the room, let's begin. We stayed in 6108, a very spacious room with a huge balcony with three sun lounges. Very impressive. They're not all as big as this, by the way. The rooms feel somewhat dated, even though they are not. But this is not trying to be a modern boutique hotel. It's simply designed as a tribute to MFI and beige, in my opinion. Who cares? The rest of the ship is gorgeous, and if you ask for a window table seat in the dining room, you will have the best room in the house. The views will blow your mind. Just magical. You will get all of the five-star luxuries in your room, including the dressing gown, slippers, hair dryer, as well as the tea and coffee, everything you'd expect. Naturally, you get a butler and maid on this level of cruise who cannot do enough to help. They're quite superb. They're unbelievably friendly and efficient. Nothing is too much bother. You are also welcomed on board with half a bottle of delicious champagne. One of the best I've tasted, actually. It was perfect as we sailed off from Venice. 
Room service is available 24-7 within the price of your cruise. It's an extensive menu too, and excellent quality food, as you would expect. Do take advantage. This is arguably the most decadent part of your trip. From burgers, salads to crab sandwiches, it can be delivered 24-7. Breakfast can also be delivered to your room at no extra cost until 10 a.m. This is perfect for the balcony, especially when you're sailing out of port or into port. Glorious and so memorable. All food is included on the ship. However, if you want water in your room, it's $20 for six large bottles or $3.50 each. Unlike other cruise liners where alcohol and soft drinks are included or discounted in packages, all alcohol and soft drinks are charged whilst on board Cunard. However, go to the Lido restaurant on the ninth floor 24-7 or use room service and you'll get tea, coffee, juices and water free there. The rooms are fully air-conditioned, however, it is a little noisy, and I do not believe you can switch it off. Once you're used to it, you're fine, although annoyingly mine was directly above the bed. The bathrooms are simple but adequate, again dated and compact, but the amenities are of a high standard. You obviously get endless towels, soap, shampoo, conditioner, bath gel, lotion, and of course these are restocked twice daily so you'll never run out. The joy of a five-star luxury hotel or cruise is that you get a nightly turndown service. This is a treat, a refresh for the room, plus two chocolates and tomorrow's schedule and all the information left during dinner. They'll even close the curtains for you. You'll have to do nothing during your trip. Quite splendid. There is dry cleaning on board, but you'll also have access to free laundrette. This does get busy, uh, but it will save you a fortune. It's very convenient. Throughout the day, you can enjoy various bars and pubs, of course, around the cruise ship. There's also a mini bar in room at extra cost too. The main opulence by far with Cunard is their food. It never stops. The Lido offers food all day, buffet style, and there's truly something for everyone. Your day culminates, though, with dinner at your pre-assigned table on the two-floor Britannia restaurant. This is without question the centrepiece of the ship. Even though it's at the back, it's quite spectacular. Cunard is quite precise and strict for obvious reasons with meal times. You're given a table for dinner and although they try to be as helpful as possible on a full ship like ours, it's almost impossible to change tables. The dress code is baffling to me. On formal nights, men have to dress up like penguins whilst women can wear more or less what they like. It's incredibly outdated and somewhat tedious. You are requested to wear formal jackets every night from 6pm. I guess the pomposity and elegance of Cunard and its passengers is the main appeal. There's silver service in Britannia and you'll get a delightful three-course meal served swiftly and the service is impeccable. If you're in a more exclusive cabin, there are other restaurants on the top deck that most of us do not have access to visit. I cannot comment on their fabulousness for this reason. Every night there's something special, whether it be steaks, scallops, fish or souffle. Amazing quality food, restaurant quality at least, delivered to 2,000 passengers. It's very impressive and you certainly will not leave hungry. If you do, just call room service. Afternoon tea is served daily at the Queen's Room between 3.30 and 4.30. If you cannot be bothered with the pomp, then room service at the Lido is there for you. They'll give you everything that you can think of, all cooked fresh and replaced regularly. The night of boarding and the night before leaving are the most informal nights. You might get away with not wearing a jacket if you're careful. Open all day, the Lido has informal casual dining and you just can turn up and more or less get away with wearing what you like, although the ship does have a trousers and jacket policy from 6pm. You will certainly not be short of food and, like me, probably feel guilty by the ludicrous overindulgence. Well, don't worry, there is a gym on the ninth floor to work it off, overlooking the front of the ship. With daily classes, free weights, there's running machines and cross trainers, there's something for everyone if you can be bothered. The pools on board are small but fine. Do not jump, they're not deep. There's one at the front and back of deck nine. Space is limited on deck and you may struggle to find a sunbed. I'm told people get up early and put towels on their chosen sunbed, which is unbelievable to me. I was surprised how little room there is and how compact the pool area is. This does not feel luxury at times. Days in port obviously are much quieter. Bizarrely, there is not an ironing board in room, however, you'll find an ironing board and iron in the laundrette. If you're bored in the day, you may wish to go to the casino, card room, or even help complete the jigsaw in the main atrium. There's a library on board, stocked with every type of book that you may wish to borrow and read. 
You'll find shops on board selling reasonably priced clothes and essentials. There's also an art gallery if you want to treat. There's a Cunard gift shop and affordable presents for all the family there. And there's a pub on board as well with twice nightly entertainment. The Jans Band were truly terrific. Great energy. There's a huge ballroom on deck two akin to the Blackpool Tower dance room and of course on the ninth floor you'll find a beautiful bar there where you can watch a solo artist having a glass of whiskey before bed the glorious queen victoria royal court theater is home to the biggest acts at 8 30 and 10 30 to coincide with meal times sadly i found most of the entertainment from the onboard crew low rent outdated and disappointing certainly not five star but then again who's judging in fact their choreography appears to suit vegas strip clubs at times this was odd for the world's number one luxury liner quite surprising laughably bad at times they do seem to like to twerk a lot the headliners are flown in and are very polished and professional but not to everyone's taste the consensus on board was that most didn't bother going as they'd seen it all before others felt that the acts were too cruise ship the irony what a shame the theater though is stunning what a space that is Every day you'll be offered the opportunity to go on excursions. They're not cheap and they do restrict you. However, the ship will never leave without you if you're on a formal Cunard excursion. We mostly made our own way in port and you have more than enough time to see what you want to see before getting back on the ship. Normally you're in port for eight or ten hours. The dilemma is always that you've spent so much money on being on the ship. Why get off it? Surely the joy is being on the ship and enjoying its amenities. For me, the best thing about Cunard was the food service and balcony. To sail into and out of port with room service and a cocktail was magical. The views are truly sensational. You'll never forget these sights. The night before you leave, you're required to leave your bag outside the cabin and disembark the ship by 8am. Early, right? This does somewhat ruin your last night as you only have the clothes that you will travel in the following day. So overall, the Queen Victoria by Cunard is an experience that you will never forget. At 38, I'm probably going to leave it a couple of decades before I return, but I certainly am glad that I gave it a go. Basically, it's five-star opulence, pomposity, service and food, four-star cabins and the best holiday on earth for 60 plus. You've been listening to another review by me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had over 12 million minutes viewed on YouTube. You can check out all of our hundreds of interviews and reviews at www.celebrityradio.biz. Ta-da.